The first thing anyone that knows about Brandon Maxi will notice on this particular model is that they've got rid of that awful forend that used to click on when you pushed it on, which was not ideal. Um, personally, the gap was always a bit too much for me here and we did have a few cracking issues. So straight away, I think that's a much better, much better option. So they've returned to the conventional screw cap end. So we'll just take the forend off. Nice positive click. As you can see, it's got the, um, the stud for a sling swivel in the front, like all Maxxis is. Take the forend off, and there we have the traditional, I'm gonna use that word, um, gas operating system like you would find in a Winchester SX3 or a Browning Maxxis, whereby simply the piston, which is removable, sits in the cup in the barrel, bit of, a bit of a, um, insight into how similar to work if you don't know here. And what it does is it simply ports the gas from the cartridge through the barrel, through the piston, which cycles the action. Okay, so obviously we've done a bit about semi-autos on this channel and what you've got to remember is with a gas semi-auto, they do need a bit more cleaning than an inertia one, something like a Benelli, because ultimately there's more working parts. Now that hasn't really changed in terms of the Maxxis, any of the Maxxis, it's Maxxis 2, Maxxis 1, whatever. So cosmetically, this is the, this is the carbon fibre one. Now, the previous model Maxxis in the carbon fibre hadn't got this um, quite cool comb system in the top, which I think is removable. I haven't actually tried to pull it off. I don't think there's any in the box as terms of spares, so I would have to double check the browning on that. Uh, of course, the last time they used something similar to this was in the browning synergy composite, which was dreadful. So carbon fibre finish, and another thing I really like apart from the comb is the addition of the Inflex 2 recoil pad. The original Inflex pad was sort of a hard piece of rubber, almost like a tyre, with grooves cut into it, and it was just ridiculously snaggy. The stocks were a bit shorter on the Maxxis ones, the pad was dreadful, so this, being able to put the Inflex 2 on it, is a massive step forward because it doesn't snag. Obviously you can add the spaces accordingly, make the stock as long or as short as you want, and I like that. Um, also, these rubber grips, which is new, uh, they are also, I believe, removable. Now the problem was with the Synergy Composite, Black Ice, whatever you want to call it, is that the gray rubber grips wore like hell and you couldn't actually replace them very easily. I understand from Browning that when these do eventually wear out, those are replaceable. I like the feel of them, I think it's nice and grippy, so if you're out in a pigeon hide and it's peeing down a rain, it's gonna be a nice bit of kit to, to hold onto and keep nice and, nice and steady. This bigger bolt handle, we did see it in the previous model Maxxis, um, so it's been around for a little while, as has the, the, uh, the bigger bolt release. But again, autos these days, they're just getting more user-friendly in terms of bigger buttons, more simple operation, so that's, only, that's, that's a good thing from my point of view. So another thing to point out, this is the, the nearest they've got to like a clay semi-auto, this carbon fibre one. And the main reason that sets it apart from the other models is that it hasn't got a magazine cut off like the other game, game in inverted commas versions. Uh, gold trigger, save to catch your standard. Like I said, it's no different in terms of operation to the original Maxxis. So we'll just fray it back together and we'll talk about the uh, fun moment. Huh. Okay, so fore and back on. Like I say, my absolute favorite bit is I've done away with that fore end, that speed lock thing, which is more hassle than it was worth. I'm sure owners and gun, chop de gun, gun dealers alike will concur with that. This is a much more conventional way. It works better and it's idiot proof to be fair. So grips on the fore end are exactly the same as on the pistol grip, which I understand from Browning that you can replace when they do wear out, which is a good thing moving forward because ultimately uh, it is just a rubber grip. Yes, this, this, this carbon fiber finish is exactly that. It's not real carbon fiber. Um, and this is confirmed by the fact this particular gun weighs seven pound five ounces. If it was made of carbon fiber, it would probably be floating off the desk. It's quite similar in the in the actual feel to the original Maxxis. They've not you know they've not changed lots because ultimately it's a really popular gun. It works well, so why would you you know if it ain't broke, don't fix it, so to speak. 
Invector Plus barrels, Invector Plus barrel, sorry. So 18.7 bore, Invector Plus chokes, um, superior steel shot proof, three inch chamber. So it is, a, it is a, an all rounder. Uh, six to eight mil tapered rib. I think the previous model in the Sporter was a bit wider, which I actually preferred because it gave it a bit of extra weight. And like I said, when we talk about guns on this channel, particularly clay guns, what you do want is a bit of weight. And although this isn't the lightest semi-auto on the market, it does still feel a bit whippy and a bit light. Um, so, matte finish barrels, I think five Invector Plus chokes. It does come with a set of shims, so of course you can drop it, cast it, do whatever you need to do to get the correct fit. And it just feels typical browning, you know, it's nice and solid. Uh, I've shot a couple of these. This particular model feels to me like the trigger is slightly smoother than the previous model. I've just tried it with a snap cap because, as is the case with semi auto, the triggers always tend to be a little bit on the heavy side, and that's simply because you know the last thing you want is a hair trigger on a semi auto and then you turn it into a full auto. Grooves on the top of the receiver, top of the action, obviously that's not for us, that's for the, I would imagine that's larger for the American market. If people want to go hunting with it, stick a uh, scope or red dot on it or something and shoot slugs through it. You know, not the sort of thing you shoot in, uh, in the UK or in a clay ground. As with all Max, it comes with a five year warranty, which is very good. It's not industry beating, but it is, it is perfectly acceptable for the cost of the gun uh, in a hard case with all the accoutrements, beads and whatnot. And yeah, I mean, that's it really. I think it's quite a nice revamp. There's a few things they've changed which I like. Nothing that I don't really like, um, if I'm honest. My choice would be a 30 inch because I think this just feels a tiny bit whippy and that extra couple of ounces I think would be would be beneficial from a, from a clay gun point of view. Uh, if you were going to use it in a pigeon hide, I'd probably go for 28 inch because it's just a bit more manageable. And you've got to remember these things are longer than over and unders anyway. Obviously this is not the only Maxxers they make, you can also buy it in a, a composite, a camo, uh, they do some nice wooden ones with nice bits of engraving on and birds and things like that. So if you are interested in a Maxxers, get in touch with us, come down, we've got demos you can try. Um, obviously what we will do is we will look at the fit in terms of the cast, the drop, the, the length certainly. And, uh, and that's about it really, so not too much of an exciting video because it's not that different to the old one, but ultimately change is always for the better. Brand new Maxxers 2, carbon fibre. Thanks for watching. Come and see us soon. Cheers.